The divorce of Bill and Melinda Gates was sad news for all of us. Here was a couple who seemed, for all their wealth, pretty normal. They raised three children. They established a foundation in their names that had saved the lives of countless people across the globe. They regularly appeared at events as a happy couple. Then one day, they announced they're getting divorced. I just assumed that they were also happy at home. How often do we just assume? People we see from time to time, even friends, they're so kind and welcoming to us when we see them out. We just assume they also must be the same way at home. Or they must be the best spouse, or the best grandparent, the best parent. Only later do we find out, yes, they're great in public, to their buddies, to people at shul, even to strangers. But at home, they're not always so great. In fact, they're very difficult, hard to live with, never helpful, never caring, never considerate of those closest to them. When I was a younger rabbi, I often looked for advice from older ones. I would often ask to my older colleagues, what's the best way to be a successful rabbi? One particular wise and experienced rabbi gave me some great advice. He said, Brian, the best advice I can give you, be a mensch at home. At first, I thought he made a mistake. I tried to correct him. I said, you mean be a mensch in public when I see people out, even when I'm not in the mood to speak with members? No, he said, Brian, you heard me right. Be a mensch at home. Because as he explained to me, it can be difficult to be nice at home. Your spouse, your children, they're pretty much stuck with you. You may think you don't have to, as much to lose by not being kind to them. In addition, there'll be many days when you'll be tired, exhausted from a day's work. You'd rather just put up your feet and not do a thing. But he warned me and advised me. If you can overcome that, be a mensch to your wife, and of course to your children, especially when they're young and can be difficult, it will be so much easier to be a mensch in public. You'll just be used to being a mensch. And you'll be a better rabbi for it. Most importantly, you'll be a better father, husband, and person for it. And that happiness you find at home will spill over into your work. There's an old story told of the Brisker Rav, who was the head of the great Brisk Yeshiva in Jerusalem. It seems one day that he had a student who was having trouble getting along with his wife. And one day the student arrived early at the Rav's home. The great Rav invited him in, poured him a cup of coffee, and asked him what was wrong. The student replied, my wife is giving me a hard time because I refuse to take out the garbage. Can you imagine that she wants me, a Torah scholar, to actually take out the garbage? The brisker Rav nodded his head and simply said to the student, let me think about this. The very next morning, early, there was a knock at the student's door. Much to his astonishment, the great brisker Rav was standing at his doorstep, asking to come in. When the student invited his teacher inside, the Rav went straight to the kitchen found the garbage can, and took it out to the street. When the student, astonished, asked the Rav, what was he doing? He simply replied, it may be beneath your dignity to take out the garbage, but I thought I'd show you it isn't beneath my dignity. Yes, yes, it's just as important to be the same helpful, the same kind, and the same considerate person at home as you would be in public, no matter how important we may think we are. At home, we're all equal. In our Torah portion today, the Levites and Kohanes are designated again with certain privileges, special privileges, that no other Israelites can do. They were the most important people in ancient Israel, honored and respected as religious authorities and sources of extraordinary wisdom. Yet the Torah also tells us 
of their day-to-day duties in terms of their temple service. The priest arrived at work in the morning to great fanfare. After all, he was going to do God's work for the people, offering the sacrifices, making important judgments about which things were pure and impure, helping people to recover from great illnesses. But the very first thing the priest had to do when he arrived in the morning was take off his fancy clothes and put on his schlepper clothes, the biblical equivalent of old jeans and a torn sweatshirt. And then he, the great priests, they had to clean out the altar from the ashes of the previous day's sacrifices and then carry those ashes outside. So literally, the great priests of ancient Israel started their days by taking out the garbage. Yes, everyone can be the same helpful person at home as they would be in public. But yes, as we all know, it's easier at times to be a mensch in public. Who doesn't want people to like us, to respect us, to think that we're good people? But at home, we may think, these people are stuck with me. Why do I have to be so nice? I could be a jerk. But our tradition, as it reads in the Torah portion today, is there to remind us, Ka'asher yachnu ken yisa'u. As they camp, so shall they march. Interpreted by our rabbis to teach us that one should be the same in person at home as away from home. The same person in private as in public. Yet every once in a while, I'll do a funeral for someone who everyone thought was terrific. An older person who did so much for other people, always willing to help. But at home, they weren't so great. Never really around, too tired to help and get involved. They were the first person to sign up for a work trip, but the last to attend a child's baseball game. They were more than happy to stay an extra hour at the office to help a colleague, but the last to put in the extra time to help their own children with their homework. At those funerals, those work people, those colleagues, the ones they wanted to spend so much time with, they're rarely found. Instead, I'm left with a few estranged family members without much to say. A reminder to me and perhaps to all of us, it is family. It is family who remind us all of the most crucial Jewish value of all. That it's family that's truly what life is all about. My friends, this Shabbat, let us live by this lesson as we try to set the best example for young people like our Benot Mitzvah, our children, our grandchildren, the youth of our community. Yes, be the same helpful person at home as you would be in public. And by living by this value, by this principle, life will be richer, family relationships will be more rewarding, and a precious legacy will forever be remembered. Shabbat Shalom. And we're now ready.